Hey guys, today's video is on the Atoto S8 standard second generation. I'm sure you've heard of Atoto before. They're one of the big boys of the Android head unit game. They sell their stuff on Amazon, which means that they actually have a lot of faith in the quality of their products because we know that with Amazon, if you don't like something, you can just send it back. So that's a very, very good thing. This head unit has three gigabytes of memory and it uses an octa-core processor from ARM. So it's gonna be pretty fast. And don't forget, I don't get paid for these reviews. It's just my own experience and opinion that I like to share with you. Right, let's get it out of the box. Now it's very similar to the other Atoto units that I've uh, reviewed. It is a very sturdy unit and it does come across as being a very high quality as well. And then of course on the front here you have these lovely physical buttons giving you a little bit of additional quality. You have a microphone, an aux in, a micro SD card slot and then you have a, a USB port here as well under this rubber and a reset button. And then on the back you have sub in, front video in, a rear camera input, then you have auxiliary input, so that's video in and left and right audio auxiliary in as well. And then you have your four pre-outs, front left, front right, rear left, rear right as well. This FACRA connector up here is for the GPS connector. You have your USB ports connected to this particular port here. And then the Wi-Fi antenna is connected to this FACRA. And then you have an external microphone input here. But yes, it does look very nice. It's obviously not a standard double din size, uh, but it does come with all these brackets to uh, help you mount it uh, in the car. Also in the box, you've got a choice of not one, but three different looms for this unit, depending on the type of vehicle that you're putting it into. Two of these have the standard ISO connection on them, but the difference between these two is that the constant power and the ignition live is switched on the two of them because some vehicles have different wiring. The third connection doesn't have an ISO loom, it's completely free of any connector, so you can just splice the wires directly into your car. You've got an external microphone, which is excellent. And they're giving you a couple of different trims as well, uh, depending on the vehicle and surround that you're using. And then you've got some screen protectors. And this is actually the only unit I've ever seen which actually gives you screen protectors. So that's uh, pretty cool as well. Right, let's get it in the car. So as you can see, I have the Atoto S8 standard second generation installed in my Saab 9.5. And it looks rather pretty with its physical buttons, which are always a really, really big plus. Plus the fact you have a USB on the front here as well, as I mentioned earlier in the video. You will see on the camera here that you can see quite a lot of reflection uh, in the screen. Uh, you might think that's bad, but it actually isn't because when you're looking from above, you don't see all the light hitting the screen. So it's, it's not an issue. And when I switch it on, you'll understand why that's not a problem either. Right. Let me turn it on and I'll show you what we have here. So the ignition has been turned on. Instant on, great. Now the instant on happens if you have had the head unit on at some point in the last few hours so that you don't have to wait for it to boot up. The boot up time ridiculously fast and that includes the Saab logo that comes up when you turn it on. So you can choose the logo of your car and it will come up as the loading sequence when it's cold booting. But when it's hot booting, like I just did now, instant on, perfection. Really, really great thing. If you look at the quality of the screen as well, you'll notice that it's a very high quality, high contrast screen. Now it's not the best screen that you can get because QLED is the best standard of Android head unit screen and it's actually available on a Toto on the more expensive models. This is a standard model, so it doesn't come with QLED, but the screen is still very good indeed. You'll notice from the desktop, they haven't strayed too far away from the standard look of an Android head unit. So you've got some main apps along the bottom here, and then you have uh, some other apps that you can add in this section here. 
got you have direct access to music here on this widget here. But if you press this button here, you can go into the rest of your apps and if you keep going, you'll find some widgets that you can also add to your background as well. Again, sort of a classic Android kind of uh, background. But to be honest with you, it's simplicity. How, what you see is what you get. It's very, very easy to use as a result of that. So it, it, is, a, it, is, a nice, uh, it is a nice looking unit. Now the feel of it is really lovely. It's very, very, very quick. Everything that you do on this unit is very, very quick indeed. So it's really a, a joy to use in that respect as well. And, and this is the sort of thing that you expect from a Toto as a major brand of Android head unit. There's a reason why they are highly respected. And um, it is because they do have attention to detail and quality in their units. Uh, it's certainly one of the top brands of head unit that you can buy. So going a little bit further into the speed of things, let's do my usual test with Spotify. So I'm loading it up now. And there we go, it's loaded. That's actually very quick for an Android head unit. It's not the fastest, and again, this is not the most expensive top-end Atoto you can buy, but that's still pretty damn fast. And the way that Spotify is displayed on the screen is comfortable to look at, is just perfect for this. It looks stunning. Let's try Google Maps. Basically instantaneous. So we're talking about a unit. Look at this. Absolutely fantastic. Real fast unit. Just loads very, very, very quickly. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's perfection. That is exactly what you're looking for with an Android unit. So from a look and feel and speed perspective, excellent. So let's talk about vehicle integration. So immediately I can tell you this was very, very easy to set up my steering wheel controls. So as you look, I can control my volume using my steering wheel controls here. And if I go into Spotify, I will show you that I can control my tracks by pressing my automatic gear lever on both sides, which is excellent. And I can play, press play and pause as well. So very, very good integration with the car. Now, this does not interfere with my uh, SID. I can still control my SID using my SID buttons, so it's not interfering with the car at all. Now, fitting was not an enjoyable experience, especially when you see that I had to use something like this angle grinder to actually get the thing in the car. Now, the reason for that is because this particular car and the Saab 93 for that matter, has to have the unit attached to the trim and not the actual car itself. And the way that they do that is that they have this, like a cage, which is attached to the uh, trim, which holds the unit in place. Now the Atoto, like many other Android units, is not the standard double din like this joying is. It is a, uh, their own size. Now in a lot of cases, that's perfectly fine because Atoto actually supply you with all of these different types of brackets so that it will actually just screw into a lot of cars. But with the Saabs in particular, it doesn't. So what I ended up doing is using a cage like this and cutting uh, the top and the bottom off so that I could push the Atoto in. The main problem with it is that the face is rather wide and therefore takes up, um, it can't sit in the cage. It sits outside the cage because of how thick the front of the head unit is. So to actually get it in the cage, I had to cut the cage to, to get it in and, and therefore that's how we've got to a position where you can see it now. But again, that is a Saab related problem. Uh, rather than anything else, and, and there are ways that you can get around it. Uh, I, I chose the uh, the angle grinding of the cage because I'd actually already done it for the Saab 9.3. But there's another way I could have used one of these brackets to actually screw it into the car, and then I could have snapped off the um, the back of this plastic bezel um, so that it would have gone uh, into the car, and then I would have had to find another way to get the bezel in, maybe with some uh, sticky. Velcro or something like that. 
But again, the point is, is that's a Saab problem, not a, a Toto problem. Right, if I go into settings here and I go into system, you'll see that there is actually a system logo startup. You can see that mine has got Saab selected because I'm in a Saab, which is really cool. And you can see that there are many, 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 many other brands of cars here. And you will probably find that yours is in here somewhere as well. So the point is, they've made it extremely easy to customize it to your particular vehicle and that's awesome. Now what I can't see in the settings anywhere is any other canvas integration. So that means that this is not one of the head units where you can actually connect it to advanced features of the canvas to be able to look at things like climate control and whether the doors are open or anything. So that's not something that this has. But one of the other things that it does have, if we go into general here and we scroll down, we can find panel illumination and you can see that I have green buttons here because I have chosen green uh, in this list of, uh, of colors, but you can literally move this around and have your buttons any color you want. So from a vehicle integration perspective, it, it is pretty good. Okay, so let's talk about features. Obviously it's an Android head unit, so you have all the good stuff like YouTube, you can put Netflix on it, you can watch Amazon Video, BBC iPlay, you can use all the video stuff that you can't do on the big brand units. But that's standard Android stuff. And then obviously if I pop my car into reverse, you get a proper good quality reverse camera coming up. And this is an Atoto AHD reverse camera, high definition reverse camera, it's excellent. The reverse camera didn't come with this unit, it's something that I needed to get separately, uh, but getting an AHD uh, reverse camera does make a considerable difference to one of those cheap eBay ones that you can buy. What it also does have is Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. Not wireless Android Auto though, but it does have wireless Apple CarPlay, so that's what I'm gonna be testing right now. So to start off with, we need to actually connect this unit to Bluetooth of the iPhone. So I'm gonna go to the phone button here and I'm going to click on Bluetooth and I'm going to click scan and you can see Stuart's iPhone here so I'm going to click on that and I'm going to make a pair request on my iPhone so I'm going to hit pair allow contacts yeah fine okay so we can see it's now connected so now what we want to do is go into the apps and go to car link, wait for the device to connect. Connecting. On my iPhone it says use CarPlay. Yeah, I'm gonna use the CarPlay. And there we go, wireless Apple CarPlay. Um, so that's excellent. Very, very quick to set up, no hassle whatsoever. So total control over Google Maps, my Spotify, and then whatever else are apps that I've got on my iPhone that are compatible with CarPlay. As I say, it does actually have Android Auto as well, but you need to connect it using a USB cable. So let's talk about the sound quality and control. This Atoto has one of the very best audio chipsets in it and it sounds amazing. Obviously it has DSP, digital signal processing, so that you have the ability to control your audio. So if I pull down from the top here and go to equalizer, you'll see that you have a 16 band graphic equalizer. But you have this equalizer for the front and the rear. So you can actually control the front and the rear completely separately. Now obviously you can modify these uh, manually uh, by moving these bars up and down but you also have a bunch of presets that you can use here as well if you don't want to have to mess about with it but obviously the best way to do it is to adjust the frequencies individually so you can get the best possible sound out of your car now in this car which has the premium Harman Kardon system it sounds absolutely glorious okay it's one of the better sounding Android head units really really good now you have your loudness control up here you have your time co correction, so you can actually control the uh, amount of milliseconds delay to any particular speaker to get the perfect possible sound. You have a rear speaker boost here. You have the ability to bass boost both the front and the rear speakers separately as well. You have your sub control here, where you can actually control the frequency range. You have your standard fade and balance options here as well 
and then you can control the frequency range of both the front and rear speakers. So as you can see, loads of control of the audio from this unit. It is spectacular from a sound perspective. You're not going to be disappointed with this head unit. It's, it's excellent. So from a look and feel perspective, the unit has physical buttons which feel excellent. The design of the actual face of the unit is lovely as well. The screen, whilst it's not QLED, it does still give a very good definition. So it's, it's really nice. And the software is very, very easy to navigate and it just looks great. So from a look and feel perspective, I'm going to give this unit an eight. From a speed perspective, it's very fast. It's not disappointing in the slightest. It's not the fastest Android head unit that I've ever used, but the reaction times are great. So from a speed perspective, I'm going to score this unit an eight. From a vehicle integration perspective, iToto are giving you the option to choose your own car logo at boot up, which is excellent. Not to mention it's very easy to program your steering wheel controls with it. They also give you lots of brackets to install it into multiple different types of cars, but unfortunately nothing in particular for the Saab car. Car, and there's no additional canvas integration for things like climate control and other areas of car canvas. So for that reason, I'm gonna give the integration score a six. From a features perspective, they have given us wired Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. So from a features perspective, I'm gonna score the unit an eight. From a connectivity point of view, you've got full RCA coverage, including for a subwoofer. You have the ability to add multiple cameras, including the reverse camera and you also have analog video in and some analog video outs for rear monitors. There's no digital connectivity on this head unit at all though. So from a connectivity perspective, I'm going to score it a seven. From a sound quality perspective, Atoto have an excellent unit here. They've got a really good audio chip. They have a really good DSP, really good control over the audio. It is a really nice sounding head unit, something that you would not be disappointed with. I'm going to score a nine. Hope this video was useful to you. If I didn't answer any questions that you might have, just ask them in the comments section below. And then obviously please like and subscribe to my channel if you like this kind of content.